Hello, Jess Too Good here, and today I'm reviewing the Lego Batman movie, The Riddler Riddle Racer. And this set retails for $30. I got it from Target. It has five minifigures, and now let's take a look at them. This set is just loaded with exclusive villain minifigures, and the first of which is the Riddler. And this is a new version of the Riddler, who has this little staff right here, which finally has the Riddler question mark. This is a totally new molding that you see has one kind of a hole right there so that you could stick it onto bar pieces. It is a hard plastic, um, which was pretty interesting. I thought it was going to be rubber or something. And the printing on this Riddler minifigure is so well done. Oh my gosh, this guy is incredible. Love the side arm printing with the little question marks. Because those question marks just carry all the way from his front kind of jacket to his back torso and then to his other arm. And you can see they even have like little kind of cuffs right there, which is just excellent printing. And then you can see his... Uh, Front face right there, yeah, I guess it's, it's a lot like some of the other Riddler faces. But the part up here, which is my favorite part of the whole minifigure, is his hat. We got the little question mark bowler hat, which we've seen before for the Riddler, but never with this hair attached, which gives off kind of a, a what was it? It was the Jim Carrey Riddler. That's what it reminds me of, the Jim Carrey Riddler from, what was it, Batman Forever, I think it was? And if you go to the back... You can see he has a pretty ticked off facial expression. I, I love that. So this is just an incredible minifigure. You could also get the Riddler and his hat in the Arkham set, which I don't know when I'm going to get that. But this version is exclusive because it comes with that nice torso. Here is <laughs> Calendar Man. What a wacky villain. Oh my gosh. Uh, first off, the face looks like Captain Falcon. Let's just get that out of the way. Love that face print though for that reason. And the dual molded legs are very nice as well with some nice printing for some tights and some kind of designs right there with the L's. You also got all these numbers around because that kind of matches his cape, which is just a bunch of numbers, like a ripped up calendar. I love that. I don't know much about this villain, but he looks like he's wacky and crazy. So I really think it's a funny addition. You'd see there's a one in a 31 right there because, you know, most bumps have 31 days. And underneath the little kind of cape you can see there's some nice torso print right there and keep in mind this is a hard kind of cape it's not the newer softer ones but I guess that kind of works for the minifigure that you're trying to go for other little things about him is his uh, little beanie right here is the same beanie that the skater from series 4 used but it's in red and it has that nice kind of calendar printing on there and unfortunately no back facial printing because you know I guess it would kind of leak through the beanie but still, it is a very, very good minifigure. This is probably my favorite of this whole set. Here is Kite Man. And if you thought Calendar Man wasn't ridiculous, I mean, Kite Man has to be. This guy is freaking ridiculous. And that's really the whole point of this. These are some wacky villains that were basically forgotten. Well, I mean, Kite Man kind of had a resurgence because he's really related to the popular YouTuber, I Hate Everything. And when you look at him, you just can't have that theme not play in your head. Either way, uh, his Kite part is actually it looks like it's attached just by this little kind of flexible bar right here but what really kind of attaches it to him is this nice clear neck piece and it just kind of attaches just like that with those two studs and you can actually fold the back part right here as you'd like and it could fold all the way back there if you would like but you can't really fold it to the front too well either way that kite attachment is still very nice to play around with and let's take it off and here he is with the whole kite part removed. Still a fantastic looking minifigure with the front printing. And you even got a little bit of back torso printing with the little line on the bottom. Another part I really like about him is this helmet piece, which I think is a totally new mold. This is not the piece I expected them to use. You can see it's a lot smoother than that older piece uh, with, you know, the, the uh, piece that they use for like pilots and such. And if you take that off, you can see his excellent. This is just a really good face prints. And you could use this for a lot of celebrities and stuff like that. Like I might use that for Will Arnett or Bruce Campbell. Well, I mean, Will Arnett is already Batman in this movie, but you get what I mean. And then he has this alternate facial expression on the back, which you can see looks pretty menacing. And I even like the little printing on the top of his helmet, which is just a really, really nice touch. So that is it for Kite Man. And last but not least of the villains is Magpie. He's probably my least favorite of the four villains in this set, but still a fantastic minifigure, don't get me wrong. Love her haircut, which is that uh, kind of, uh, I guess, pixie cut 
in white, which is pretty neat to get. Also two sticks of dynamite and that nice body armor piece is actually the Valkyrie Warriors piece from series 15 in black, which I think is the first time we're getting it in that color. A one by one stud in the middle in translucent red. And on the back you can see there's two studs attached to that body armor piece. And if you take all that stuff off, you can see her nice torso printing underneath. She does use one of those dress pieces, which is just a sloped piece and her back torso printing as well as her alternate facial expression where I think I like that one a lot more. That's a pretty cute face. So in this line, we get a lot of vehicles that look oversized and are done beautifully. We got the Penguin Limo, we got the Joker, Notorious Lowrider. Then you have some that are oversized and done terribly like the Batmobile. This one is kind of in the middle. It's oversized, yeah, but it doesn't really look beautiful. Looks pretty cool, that's just all right, I guess. I just don't get why they did this size and everything, because it, or why they even gave the Riddler this vehicle, because it just doesn't scream the Riddler to me. And it just kind of looks like a creator vehicle um, and that, that they kind of fit in the middle, a little minifigure scale part. And when it doesn't stand on its own, that's kind of disappointing to me. I like some parts that are the Riddler's flavor. For example, this little question mark on the front, which is a banner and underneath it, it reveals these little blasters. That's that's pretty cool, even though those don't really work. And they also use some translucent windshields right here for the little headlight designs. Those are cool. Um, on the side right here, you can see there are these little grappling hooks, and you may be like, wait, what? Oh, they're using those for side view mirrors. Okay, that's that's clever. I mean, it's, it doesn't work perfectly, but it, it still works. Um, then you got this back little engine part right here, which I actually really like this. This segment right here is my favorite part of the vehicle um, because that's a really cool engine design. It reminds me of something from Speed Champions and they even use the Speed Champions windshield right there. And how that works is actually a play feature as well because you can lift that up and push on these back here and those missiles shoot. That's pretty cool. I like that, I like that, I like that. And I like the seat they did um, for the back, the little cushion. You can see it's this nice kind of tan for the Riddler um, and inside there's even a little tiny, tiny sticker which is kind of hard to see behind the uh, steering wheel. And other than that, I mean there's no like license plate or anything because there's not much room to fit one on the back of this vehicle. There are these two exhaust pipes though which are pretty cool because this is kind of like a race car. But yeah, I just don't feel like this is the Riddler's vehicle. It just doesn't feel like anything unique to me. I mean, when you take a look at the Penguin limousine, that's just done perfectly. The Joker's Notorious Lowrider, which is a new vehicle, that is just, it screams Joker to me. This just seems like, okay, it's a creator car that they just kind of made minifigure scale in the middle to fit the Riddler. And it's green, so it's the Riddler, right, guys? And it's like, I mean, just because it's green doesn't mean it's the Riddler's vehicle. So I am kind of disappointed on how this build came out, but let's take a look at the box and I'll kind of summarize this in the final verdict. So here's the box for the set. And you can see the back right here, which shows all the little play features. And here's the instruction booklet, which on the back has some interesting advertisements, but uh, that's really it for the instructions. You know, I know why they put those four minifigures in the set, because the build itself is so bland. It's just a boring build. It's not a bad build at all, don't get me wrong. It wouldn't make the list of 10 bad sets with good minifigures, because it's not bad. It's just forgettable. It's very, very bland. I mean, I, I don't know what they would do for a Riddler vehicle, and I'm sure somebody comes to say, oh, in this comic of this animated series, there's a... I know, I know, I, I'm just not a... I'm a very casual DC fan. And it reminds me of the Stagecoach set in its minifigure selection where you got like five great minifigures for the price of $30. But this one, unlike that one, has a very weak build. And it's just like the Penguin Limousine vehicle, now I get why they only put two minifigures in there because the build itself was great enough to be sold on its own. This is just so weak, it can't be sold on its own, so they have to kind of inflate it with these fantastic hard to find minifigures that will most likely stay exclusive to the set. So I'll end up bringing the set of C+, very average set that is just kind of a notch above because of those fantastic minifigures. But you're paying 30 bucks and most of it is the build, so you gotta keep that in mind. Other than that, um, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.